Now, South Sudanese Foreign Minister Barnaba Marielle Benjamin says his country and its neighbor Sudan have a moral responsibility to ensure peace and prosperity in that region. Mr. Benjamin spoke in Moscow during a trilateral talks with Sudan's Foreign Minister and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Russia says it hopes talks between Sudan and South Sudan Foreign Ministers taking place on Thursday will be fruitful. South Sudan seceded from Sudan and declared independence after a referendum in 2011. Both Juba and Khartoum have accused each other of breaking peace agreements. One of the recent South Sudan peace deals signed between the government and the opposition has now been ratified by both sides. So what does this all mean for the South Sudanese at home and abroad? John Tanza, managing editor and host of VOA's South Sudan In Focus radio program, has been talking to a cross-section of leaders and citizens of South Sudan and now joins me to tell us all about that. Now, John, you know, yes. everybody's uh, kind of been excited about uh, the signing, finally, of the deal, but then there was the ratifying. Yes. Uh, briefly, can you clarify what that means, the two sides ratifying this? The two sides are supposed to endorse it. In, uh, in Parliament for Juba, the parliamentarians, the lawmakers in South Sudan are supposed to ratify the agreement, and they did that today. Uh -huh. Once the agreement is ratified by members of Parliament in South Sudan, it becomes a law. And then on the sides of the rebels loyal to Dr. Yek Machar, they also ratified the agreement today in Pagak, which is the headquarter in uh, Upper Nile State. And so now the two sides will treat this document as a law. Okay. Now, what is it that is supposed to follow quickly? After the ratification, exactly. yes. there is supposed to be a workshop for security arrangement in the transitional period. Now, this workshop was supposed to have taken place on the 5th of this month, but it could not take place because the agreement was not ratified. So, this workshop is going to take place on Saturday this week, and after the workshop, there will be the formation of the joint monitoring team to see the monitoring of the ceasefire agreement. Tell us a little about what uh, people's reactions have been, given that they have waited for such a long time. Well, the, the reaction of the people is still the same. They want an end to the conflict. Right after Dr. Yakmachar signed the agreement in Addis Ababa on the 17th of August and President Kir signed on the 26th of August, the two warring parties have been fighting each other heavily in Upper Nile State. And uh, depending on who you talk to, they will blame always the other side. The rebels will say, it's the government who attacked us. We are just acting in self-defense. The government will also say the same. But the reality on the ground is that these two forces are fighting to gain grounds that they could use as a bargaining chip in the you know, future negotiations. Talk about bargaining chip. Both sides tend to say that uh, they were literally forced into signing this peace deal. What are some of those issues that are kind of uncomfortable in that uh, agreement that could perhaps resurface. Power later. sharing. Mm -hmm. Power sharing is, is, a, is a big deal for the two sides. The agreement says that uh, President Kiel will remain the president of the country and uh, rebel leader Riek Machar will be the first vice president. But this is in the backdrop of a situation where you have a vice president in the country, that's James Wanig. So President Kiel uh, rebel leader Riek Machar and James Waniga sitting under the same roof will be a big, uh, you know, hurdle mm -hmm. for them to overcome. And the other issue is wealth sharing. Uh, oil is uh, found in Upper Nile and Jungle Estate and Unity State. And these states, the rebels have quite a chunk of power sharing in terms of ministerial portfolios in these states. So that still is a problem. And everybody wants the fat part of the cow, right? Of course, the oil <laughs> is where everybody is looking yeah. at. Question, this men and women had been, had been sitting for months upon months in Addis Ababa. You would have thought that they came to an agreement and therefore this deal was supposed to represent things that they had agreed on. Why is it that they both seem to insist that they were just forced to sign it? Because None of their aspirations were in the, in the power uh, so sharing So deal. who put them in, the, in that deal? The is EGAT, it, I mean? EGAT plus countries, the international mm -hmm. community plus yeah. regional leaders felt that the suffering of the people of South Sudan is going on unabated. And so there was a need for an end to this conflict because during these 18 months, each of the two groups 
are just talking about the same thing every day. Yeah. The rebels will say, we want the position of the prime minister. The government will say, no, 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 no. We cannot give you the position of a prime minister. It's not in the constitution. We'll give you the position of a vice president. The rebels will say, no, we, 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 we cannot take the position of yeah. vice president. We want first vice president. And so they were just arguing on the same thing for you know, months and months and months. Yes. Now, given the history of this country and uh, what citizens have witnessed, do you get a sense that they are hopeful that this deal will be implemented and restore peace in South Sudan? It is, it's a, a $1 million question mm -hmm. because as it is now, the two sides have not owned the peace agreement. They are calling it forced deal. Yeah. They have not owned it. And since the ownership is not with the two sides, their supporters are likely to behave the same. And so the future of this agreement is hanging in balance. But the good news is, at the end of it, if they go until the end of the transitional period, which is around November, there should be elections. And if the people of South Sudan are given the chance to go and have a credible election, maybe, maybe you will get a solution to this problem. You know, we just hope so. Let's because hope the people so, of South Sudan have suffered a great deal. John, thank you very much for You're your welcome. insights. Pleasure to be here. Uh, John Tanza is a managing editor and host of VOA South Sudan in Focus Radio program. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. Check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCorry. I want to hear from you.